Welcome to this special presentation from JMI, the Jewish Music Institute. The first of a two-part series of conversations involving Songlines magazine JMI and the artist Nanny. This first episode is brought to you in conjunction with Songlines magazine and will feature Songlines magazine editor-in-chief Simon Broughton in conversation with Nanny on the subject of her new Ledino album, Kechaber which will be launched as part of the EFG London Jazz Festival 2021 at Pizza Express Live in Hoban, London. The event will be on Sunday the 14th of November and will feature a pre-concert panel discussion on the album and the artistry. All tickets can be available via the JMI website, jmi.org.uk. Nani, very nice to see you. Welcome to this jmi zoomy thing um your album obviously uses the old judeo spanish language ladino but it expresses not old traditional ideas it expresses a lot of new ideas or what we might think of as contemporary issues um and the title que haber what's new sort of sounds like a social media sort of slogan um Tell me about this interweaving of old and new in your work. Uh, well, thanks for inviting me, Simon. It's nice to to meet you again, not really in person, but a little bit uh, Almost. similar to a real meeting. Um, well, for me, the old and new thing has always been a thing, I guess, uh, because like a lot of people asked me in the last two years since I've picked up Ladino stuff, So how do you keep your work so current? And then I think like, I don't really try to look into the future. I try to look into the past. And by doing so, sometimes you see the future, you know, by honing something that you were already experienced with and have an emotional baggage with, sometimes will give birth uh, within your artwork, within your framework. Uh, to something new because art today is a lot about point of view right it's not so much about renewing the musical scales for instance I cannot invent new chord schemes that weren't there before but I can tell my personal story uh, about what I feel about my heritage about my roots digging and and that could stand out because it's it's a personal take on things Let's talk about the opening song as it happens on the album, which is called Chok Seni Severin, which is actually a Turkish phrase. Um, but you you interweave it with or, or juxtapose it with a Ladino song. Tell me how those two songs came together. Um, well, really, it's a mashup. So there is a, a children's song in Ladino called Sigariyash Alarana, which means if you see a frog. And it's a pretty mean children's song. It's like about all these animals and all these kids dancing in a circle and everybody's having fun until the chorus comes and they all jump in the pan and get cooked. Not the kids, just the animals, but (laughs) it's still a bit nasty. And then there's this other Turkish song, also a traditional song, Çokseni Severin, which means I love you too much, so I hate you a little bit as well. And uh, these two notions uh, stood up for me, um, you know, from from the crowd, let's say, and uh, and also they're both in nine eights with different accents. So I thought they're really suitable for a mashup. And I started doing it in live performances, and it stuck on, and then it ended up on the record. Also, maybe important to mention that the biggest um, Ladino-speaking community uh, nowadays is in Turkey. So there is a huge tradition coming back and forth from Ladino music and Sephardic music in general, Sephardic tradition and Turkish music, especially in Izmir and that and that area. So the it, it, interweaving is the yeah to be. Asked. It's it's interesting to know that the the Ladino, the Spanish speak. It's interesting to know that the Ladino speaking Jews were very much invited into the Ottoman Empire from 1492 when they had to leave Spain because they they brought all sorts of economic benefits, trading benefits, skills with them. I mean, I guess they mainly were expelled and then they they looked for a place of refuge and they found it in the Ottoman Empire. I mean, the, a large number, I think 300,000 people ended up in the uh, Ottoman Empire and um, well, a lot of them are still there today. They even have their own 
newspaper, El Amanecer, which is like I think the only uh, current newspaper in Ladino. about some of the uh, contemporary issues that you're looking at on this on this album um, there's a song about a sex change which uses surprisingly traditional lyrics I think yeah um, it's a very interesting text a traditional text I don't know who wrote it. I tried to find out who wrote it, but I didn't find a result it's from the 11th century um, and originally the the, so the poem was called um, uh, Mal di Chatripa de Madre which means the mother's uh, womb is cursed and I discovered this text when I was doing research for the album in a, uh, an old Sephardic library in Leiden in the Netherlands and the rabbi of the community showed me the text and uh, I was surprised that in such an ancient culture uh, such a progressive topic will be discussed in such length. So there are two main characters, well, three main characters in, in, the, in the poem, and there's like a, a Greek choir. So there's a father, a mother, a daughter, and the six other sisters that are like the Greek choir. Um, and the father starts with, the mother's womb is cursed, um, because she didn't give me uh, any sons. She only gave me daughters seven daughters are not enough and the and the mother bags to him seven daughters is too many probably yeah definitely well, i think seven children is anyway a lot <laughs> but, um but like the mother bags him don't curse us our father and the, and the daughters that the require joins in and then one daughter steps up and she says, well, actually, I have the making of a man. So I will be the son you always wanted. And the parents don't accept it at first. They even say it's like a disgrace and an abomination and you will never accept you. But at the end, the mother comes around and she says, well, I, I really see you as my son. Now. I accept you as my son. And then I, I kind of reworked the lyrics a little bit because especially because of the order, because some things didn't make sense. I think back then they did a lot of associative writing and I wanted the narrative to work um, verse by verse and see the growth of the character. So I, I just moved a little bit the lyrics around. So it's mainly the, the original text. And now this song is called Sin Ding Un Hijo Varon, which means without any sons. And we're supposed to release a music video with that uh, in January. Pensé ni severin, chocs severin, pensé ni severin, 
seni severim, çok seni severim. Ben 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 seni severim, çok seni severim. Um, there's another song which goes back to a I think a Sephardic custom uh, like an alternative sort of death ritual the song is called Second Skin can you tell me about that and what the song is saying uh, the song is called Una Secunda Piel which means a second skin like you just said um, and it's actually the first Ladino song that I wrote the lyrics for as well so that was my first try ever um, and it's about a, um, a custom called La Mortaja. It's a ceremony or actually more of an event. It's, it's a party that you throw when you reach golden years. So usually on a, like a, a rounded year. So 70, 80, 90, when you, when you feel you are passing to the next stage in your life and you're wise and you, and you want to you want to start over, you want to be reborn, then you throw this huge party and you invite your friends and family to sew around you the shroud of the dead. So that, that shroud that you will be put in the grave later on in, which is peculiar and it, it sounds morbid, but um, while sitting in or lying down on a table in this cocoon state, you're supposed to meditate and think about the things you want to leave behind in this world now and you know nobody's di dying yet right it's 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 a celebration of life you are being reborn when you emerge from the cloth um you leave everything behind you and you are reborn as a new person and you don't have worries anymore so whether you're worried about your grandchildren financial state uh jealous neighbors you name it uh doesn't matter you leave it all behind and then you have a new life that you take control of you own your life again and uh, so that's why the, the song is very um, joyful as well. I like the way that you find these uh, slightly left field, slightly curious subjects in these songs or in these uh, old customs. Is there something that you don't like about the much more traditional Sephardic repertoire? Um, well, for years and years, I wasn't busy with Ladino music. And I think that was mainly because of the fact that it sounded archaic to me. Uh, and I, I must admit that I didn't connect to the over embellishment of the singing as well. So it seemed to me that mostly in the traditional um, music performance of the genre, uh, they focused more of on the um, how, on how good the singer is rather than how beautiful the music is and it was mainly about nostalgia as well so there were not a lot of new songs written and they would just kept repeating the classics i mean they're classics for a reason they're beautiful songs and i also have um traditional ladino album that i released andalusian brew in 2018 but um i guess it was my own take on these songs because I didn't really focus on the embellishment rather than focusing on the music um, itself. And then maybe that's the reason it made a difference. I'm, I'm not sure. You don't- So too anything. much nostalgia and too much vibrato. This is your- Yeah, your not only vibrato, like let's say you have a main melody. La rosa en flores. So a lot of people would sing this melody as La rosa en flores. You know, and then it's like, okay, where is the music? <laughs> um, it's it's fantastic singing. Don't don't get me wrong. I appreciate these amazing singers, but it's not my heart. And another thing is that how long can you sing cover versions? That's the reason I never stuck in the classical world. I started as a classical trombone player and uh, I, I, I sat in orchestras for five years and then after the first year it was already slightly repeating itself. 
You know, like you you play all the classics, the, the big pieces that people want to hear in the first season, and by the third season, you played them all. And then you just keep repeating them. And with Ladino songs, you even have less songs. It's not like you have like these amazing oratorios or or operas. You you have these 150 songs that everybody knows, or let's say even 20 songs that everybody knows, and then another 130 that most people don't know. And then you keep on singing the same ones because people ask for you to sing them. And if if you are a singer songwriter to start with, then you you want to put yourself in the material as well. So I guess that that's where my yeah quest started. You end your album actually with a cover version, not of a Ladino classic, but of a, a song Gracias a la Vida, which was made famous by uh, Mercedes Sosa, a fantastic yes. Argentinian singer. Yes. Um, I guess the question is, why is that on here? And I wonder whether you see yourself as perhaps part of the tradition that she comes from called Nueva Canción, a new song. Um, uh, and so are you sort of aligning yourself towards that repertoire, perhaps? Well, maybe perhaps a tradition more than the repertoire. I love the song. Violeta Parra wrote an amazing song, Gracias a la Vida. And also the Chilean dialect is, a, they say, scholars say that it's the closest to Ladino in the world from the Latin languages. So the, the, um, the accent sounds very similar to what you know and the, and, the, and the grammatical structure of the sentences is very close so for me that was a natural sh choice um if you're featuring a cover on the album then it has to be close to what you do and uh, or complete opposite because that could also be that's what we do with shape of my heart as well um but um but yeah, that I, I, what you said about Nuevo Cancion, I think that's kind of the spirit because I don't really try to serve the Ladino tradition the way it used to be until now. And I'm trying to create a new tradition if that's possible and if that's not too arrogant to say. So I want to live in the time that this tradition is still being used. And if it's 500 years ago, I don't want it to become irrelevant. So I want my quest for roots to inspire other people to look for their roots as well. And uh, that's only possible when you write new songs. So, yeah. Nani, thank you very much. Looking forward to Sunday, November the 14th. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you on the gig.
Çok seni severim, ben seni severim, çok seni severim, 